Hello, everybody, and welcome to another edition of the Weekly Rant. This time on location from Santa Monica in Los Angeles. Just before the WPT Championship, I took one last getaway shooting a show out here. Can't tell you what it is, but it'll air sometime in the fall. And you'll either love it or hate it, but you're probably going to laugh one way or the other. This week, I want to talk a little bit more about the World Series of Poker and a couple of the minor rule changes they made. One being World Series of Poker Celebrations. Now, what that essentially is, is a rule that uh, was put in place after Havad Khan did that kind of... What the heck did he call it? Mer bulldozer monster, which is just really awkward and weird. But one of the things that's important about the World Series of Poker is a lot of the fanfare, a lot of the craziness, a lot of the stuff that I think we got away from a little bit in the last two years, taking ourselves way too seriously. If we want mainstream people to be interested in our game, we're not going to do it by wearing suits and ties, everyone being quiet and prim and proper. We need people going, yeah, yeah, eat some of that. We need more of that crazy, crazy fun. That's what brought people to the game. That's what brings them back. Not the push that a lot of people are talking about, which is the PC, suit and tie, everyone clean shaven. It's just not realistic anyway, but besides that point, celebrations are back. World Series of Poker gets it. That's what it's all about. The other more controversial rule change uh, deals with that whole no talk rule. If you guys saw me on TV going ballistic, it wasn't the first time, won't be the last time. The TDA worded a rule so poorly that uh, it's impossible to enforce for any tournament director. Literally impossible. So. What the World Series has done is they've added an amendment, if you will. So it's not that you can say whatever you want in hand. It's important to note that. You can't just talk, you know, you just can't blab and say what you have in any situation. But they specifically state when you can and cannot speak. If you're the last player to close the action in a heads up pot, you absolutely can say whatever you'd like. Now what that means is, let's say Phil Helmley's moved in on the river and it's up to me. I can jibber jabber all I want. I can talk about what do you got, da da da. Now if Phil tells me what he has, He'd be the one out of line because he doesn't close the action, okay? So if it's before the flop, someone moves all in on the button, and I go, oh, gosh, I said, so should call you. I have jacks. I don't know if they're any good, but it feels like your range is pretty wide here. Blah, blah, you can blah, 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 all you want. Make good TV, whatever you want to do, or just talk things through and try to get a read on your opponent. Part of poker, getting a read. This might help you get a read in certain situations, and it was a big mistake taking that out of the game. The whole concern the TDA had with this rule was collusion. Well, once you add this amendment, that's never an issue anymore. If someone's all in and it's up to me thinking, what I say can never be construed as collusion in any way, shape, or form. So I'm, I'm happy with the rule change. I hope the TDA wakes up and realizes that, yeah, we should probably adopt this because it's just simply better worded than the rule that we have in place that's completely unenforceable. Once again at the World Series of Poker this year, we're going to combine two of my favorite passions, poker and fantasy stuff. There is going to be another World Series of Poker fantasy draft. The buy-in is going to be $25,000, so get your teams together if you want one. It's an auction-style draft, which means you've got $200, if you will, 200 points, to fill a roster of eight players. Highest bidder gets the player. So if you bid, you know, 130 of your bankroll on Jason Mercier, that means you only have 70 left to fill the rest of your team. If you want to know more about the World Series of Poker Draft last year, as well as the rules this year, there's links down below in the description area, so check those out for results from last year, as well as some modified rules. I made a couple minor adjustments to the rules, one being the 5Ks are now worth 1.5 times points, and the 10Ks are still worth 2, 10Ks and above are worth 2x, if you will. So check out the rules for any of the changes, there's a couple in there. But uh, looking forward to doing that on the 27th of May. So if you want in the $25,000 buy-in World Series Book of Fantasy Draft, or you have a team of people that want to throw a team together, contact me or, you know, people we know. Because that's how it works. You know, you got to know somebody who knows somebody who knows somebody, and then you get to me. That's kind of, I'm not giving you my freaking personal email address. We think I'm crazy. Well, that might be a little too rich for your blood. I've got a special announcement that will come out next week for all of you. Total free roll, giving away money and you're going to have a chance to be a part of the World Series of Poker Fantasy type stuff too. So I'll announce that next week when the details are all ironed out. So leading up to this stretch drive of WPT Championship and the monstrous World Series of Poker, I did get a few days of golf in, uh, and on the plane over from wherever I was in Toronto, I uh, listened to this audiobook about the psychology of golf and about being present and a little Eckhart Tolle because I'm, you know, I'm into the power of now and a new earth. Whoa, you know, I am the watcher. Ego, shh, quiet, bah, you know, I'm... So I'm getting into all that weird, spiritually crazy stuff, but it's really, really interesting. And I found that there's a ton of parallels uh, between sort of how do you have to have your mental state set for golf as well as poker. And it's really about being present. And I know that sounds really, you know, hooky, but I mean, really, just it's, it's just about, you know, focusing on what you're doing at that moment. Forget about the past. Forget about the future. All you can deal with is the hand you're being dealt. Now, the golf shot you're presented with, you know, see? <laughs> 
connection. Despite the fact that I was a little rusty on the golf course, I, I scored pretty well because I used some of the tricks from the book. So I'm really looking forward to getting back on the course. And this year at the World Series, having a little bit of balance. Um, my golf guy reminded me, says, you know the last time you won a bracelet? You actually golfed a little bit. And I'm thinking, hmm, light bulb. Psh, if I knew how to do the graphic stuff, I'd put a big light bulb. I don't. Learning. What's the worst part of my game? <laughs> my game or your my game? My game, my game. I don't care about your game. What is the worst part of your game? Yeah. Or what? My golf game. Oh, my game fucking game. everything. <laughs> Throwing clubs? No, what's the worst part? What's the worst part of my game? What do you think? Uh, you're driving. Okay, what's the best part of my game? Putting. Uh, your short game is better than this putting. Your short game. My short game? What do you think, Sam? What's my worst part of my game? Uh, everything, I think. <laughs> everything? What's the best part? Uh, putting, I think. That's about it. That's it? So here's the question, right? Everyone bugs me, and they say, like, oh, why aren't you shooting 80 every day? So explain to them. This is my golf coach, by the way, Christian. Why don't I shoot 80 every single day? Because we don't golf that much. How often have we golfed this year? Seven, eight rounds. So what do you say to those people that say in 10 minutes they can get me to shooting, like, you know, 80 every time I go out? <laughs> Come on out. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I think I'm going to try to, like, keep my sanity throughout the World Series of Poker. Still play a heavy, heavy schedule of events, but also take some time for myself and some relaxation. So recently on Twitter, I threw out a comment that ended up being a little controversial with some of the ladies, and it was related to ballerina flats. Now, my personal opinion, uh, these are the ugliest form of shoe you could possibly put on your feet. Uh, your choice, of course. My personal taste, not sexy at all. Uh, makes the leg look frumpy, especially if you wear them with skirts, girls. It's like really odd. And then uh, if with jeans, I've seen some that are like, meh, I get that. Yeah, hey, I totally understand you want comfort, right? You don't want to be wearing high heels all the time. There are alternatives, flip-flops, sandals, running shoes, chucks, how about boots, or even wedges, or slight heels, something like that. But the flats, um, just the ballerina style, bleh, they're just not attractive shoes. Now before you start throwing it back at me, I know, I know, it's just my opinion, and I'm sure that my style ain't perfect, although this shirt's pretty baller. But I've talked to some guys, and they won't say so publicly, but I think the consensus is pretty clear. They don't like the flats, so whatever. You want to be comfortable, be comfortable, but then go all the way. Why not go with something really comfortable? Because flats aren't even that comfortable from what I hear from you ladies. Go with a running shoe, just not a croc, please. Now, I don't really have a killer D-Gen story of the week for you this week. I've got, I'll have one for next week. I'm just a little rushed here. I don't have a lot of time. I'm shooting a show out here, as I mentioned. I do want to close with a little comment on Jeffrey Pollock. First of all, where are you? Really? It's been two months. <laughs> Is that him? Ha! Jeffrey Pollock. No, I'm kidding. Patty, what does she want? Never mind. Uh, yeah. So, have you learned nothing from Howard Letterer, Chris Ferguson, and Ray Batar about how the poker world receives complete shunning? You owe money to a lot of people. You owe this money, and now you've gone silent. On Twitter? What is it now? Two months straight? Not a peep. Before, hey! On the move, headed to LA, going to do some bull riding with the peeps. Now, zip. Nothing, right? Little weasel, speak. Talk. Tell the truth. Tell the truth about the whole point of this whole epic poker league from the beginning. Tell everyone the truth. You are trying to create an online poker site. Don't deny it. That's the whole goal from the beginning. You could care less about the poker world. You are in this to make a quick buck. You've never even played a hand of poker. You were just hoping legislation hit at the right time. You'd free roll this thing, open up some epicpoker.com website, <laughs> cash in millions and be laughing to the bank. Well, joke's on you, you son of a... Bleep! Come out from that rock you're hiding under and make a statement of some kind. I know you got nothing to say because you screwed up royally and you got nothing or reorganization. You guys are broke and you have no money and you have no outs. Tell the truth, bro. Stop with the lying already. There's no money. There's no hope. It's over. The people that you owe money, you're not going to be able to pay them. I just hope that the Heartland Poker Tour is able to regain control of their company that you tried to destroy and you will continue to try to destroy because that's what you do. You go from place to place. You go from the NBA to NASCAR to bull riding to poker. You're just a poison. But hopefully justice is done and they get their company back and you're out for good. We don't need people like you, you phony son of a bleep and bleep bleep bleepity bleep 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 scummy lying sack of bleep. And breathe. Oh, that felt so much better. Gotta have a little bleh every once in a while. It feels so much better to just bleh, vomit it all out for you guys. So on that note, that's all I got for you guys this week. Uh, poker's gonna get real busy. I might change the format of this and do a few more per week, a little shorter, uh, from my trailer, my Bala trailer at the World Series of Poker Rio parking lot. I will be really busy next week, 
playing the WPT Championship, and then maybe the 100K. There seems like there's one every other week. This is getting insane. People are going to get broke. I got to run. My phone's been beeping off the hook. So till next week, y'all, peace.